Hello everyone, welcome YouTube clan, Bradley here, and today we are doing another reaction video, and we are reacting to the recasting of Harry Potter for today as a television series. As a super Harry Potter nerd, I, I had someone recommend these videos to me, and I thought we'd watch them together, so let's just hop right in. Recently, I posted a video about the deleted scenes and the things cut from the original adaptation of Harry Potter. And since it's almost been 20 years since the release of Philosopher's Stone in theaters, we're drinking whiskey, by the way. A ton of people pleading Irish for whiskey another adaptation, a TV up. series to be exact. This would allow for the characters in the full story to be shown on screen without the restriction. Also, before I keep going, full credit of this video goes to Mr. Brian Seeker. Brian Seeker, he is the YouTube channel who makes these videos. Uh, full credit of this video goes to him. Go check him out if you want to catch these videos for yourself. ...of time, some may say, the way that JK herself envisioned. So if we are creating a brand new TV series for the seven books of Harry Potter, it just makes sense. I like how all these clips are the not from the first like movie. <laughs> right, they're all from... Well, there we go. And become 11 again. The youngins. Not to mention that sadly, some of the oh, original rip Alan Rickman. are no longer with us. And rip this guy. So What's his said, name? Oh, no, he's, he, Harry he died. For today. That's sad. I don't like it when people die. It's very sad. All right. Now I'm interested to see if this is like a full recast or a partial recast, or if it's, I know he said specific to a TV show. So is, are we including characters that aren't in the movies that were normally in the books? First off, I know Harry Potter is British and the original adaptation kept to the tradition that pretty much only cast British actors. Harry Potter I'm is as British as it gets. Parameters. But some casting decisions are just too good to pass up, even though they might be American or otherwise. Also, there are fair a play. Lot, I don't want this I job. Mean a lot. <laughs> I don't want to do this job. Harry Potter. So for now, let's tackle Harry Potter and the Philosopher's Stone, and the main characters in that. And then, if you do enjoy this, I didn't think about this, but I think I'm signing up for seven reaction videos. Please comment below. I think and that's what I've done here. The series, film by film, or should I say, season by season. So first off, the trio. Those I just want to take a look at what Ron's tie looks like. There is nothing more Ron than the state of the tie and the untucked shirt at the moment. Uh, this costume designer clearly understood what Ron was like in the books. <laughs> Those wonderful people who carried the entire series. Now, first casting decision, and honestly, I'm going to do a cop out instantly because I believe the trio should be all unknown actors. I love the way that we never saw Daniel oh, or Rupert or Emma's face. He better have a good freaking reason for this. Yo, I'm going to recast Harry Potter and not recast Harry Potter. What the? Before they what? landed in Harry Potter. And honestly, I feel the same way about all the students in the film. It allowed us as audience members to really attach the character to that person and allowed them to really make it their own. So for this series, line up those 10 to 12 year old actors and actors. Also... I'm not trying to take a dig. Look, I'm sure these videos are great. I'm sure I'm going to love them. But how many 10 to 12 year olds have an extensive, have such an extensive acting history that they would be known to everyone watching? Like, it's not that many. Also, like, because there's not that many 10 to 12 year olds with an extensive acting history that would kind of fit these roles, it, it does now that I'm thinking about it more make it silly for him to try and recast them. Right, because how is he going to know a bunch of... I mean, like, so I think it makes sense not to cast them now that I think about it more. But it's like, recasting Harry Potter is in the title. And I don't even know who he'd recast as Harry Potter. Because we need to find nobodies for this role. I think it's just important to the series. I apologize it's a cop-out right off the bat. But if I was that casting director it's okay. sitting in that seat, I forgive exactly you. what I would do. So before you say I that am I full of forgiveness. I won't be casting any of the Hogwarts students. Wow, Malfoy's a they tool. They should all be unknown actors. But beyond the trio, there are very important characters and adult characters that we can cast. One of monumental importance is that of Albus Dumbledore. Monumental importance. And although I love them for different Can we just, I'm just on the record. Michael Gambon was a terrible Dumbledore. I'm convinced neither he nor anyone who wrote the movies understood what the character Dumbledore was like in the books. Reasons, but I feel like it's important that He's his so, like, Michael Gam his warmth is one that can be felt through the screen. Calm, That's warmth, why I the perfect person those are Dumbledore words I think of. Would be Michael Caine. Oh, He's one of the longest yes. and most interesting careers in yes. Hollywood. Yes, I'm he in, I'm sold. But he can also 100%. be gentle. And that nature is really important for Dumbledore. And you 100%. Take it. I can hear it, 100%. No, I, it. 
but that's the what point a good pick. Batman. I'm so into he that. He can be the outcast. He can make the choice. Christian no Bale is like freakishly sexy. You see it slightly in this. when he plays Alfred in the Dark Knight trilogy, but I think he can take it a step further and really make the character his own. His face and the way he presents himself, he can make himself feel really welcoming or kind. One hundred percent. Also, can deliver those I'm really so in on this. moments. So Michael Caine as Dumbledore. Yep. I don't even need to think about that. That's McGonagall amazing. McGonagall's up next. A fierce and powerful woman. Who well, how are you going to beat Maggie Smith, man? Dominating, yet loving. Maybe the For goal her, isn't to beat her. I have a controversial choice. An actress who's actually appeared before in the Harry Potter films. Emma Thompson. Now, she donned the iconic oh. role of Trelawney. Trelawney, films, yeah. But I feel like she'd be absolutely perfect for McGonagall. Yeah. She's you know what? Emma Thompson is such a departure as Trelawney from what she's normally like. You probably you probably wouldn't even notice as McGonagall. I think that's a good pitch. Perfectly into the role. And for those who haven't seen her other acting roles, she's a chameleon. Her yeah, poise she can do anything. Presence is she's unrivaled great. on screen. Like, check this out. I got the impression last time we spoke that you didn't see the point of school. Or of me, or of any of us here. I know I was stupid. I know now that I need to go to university. It gives me absolutely no pleasure whatsoever to see our young schoolgirls throwing their lives away. Yeah, Although, of she's course, you're not one of our schoolgirls. I like this pick. Through your own volition. I like this pick because it's sneaky and good. I suppose you think I'm a ruined woman. This guy's clever. I like him. You're not a woman. No, I'm afraid I think that the offer of a place at this school would be wasted on you. That's McGonagall if I've ever seen her. So Emma Thompson for McGonagall. Yeah, I think so. Also, the editing, he really if makes you visualize it. Professors, it would only be right if we tackled Snape. Oh. The... Okay, can we just be clear that Alan Rickman is Severus Snape? Uh, I'm, a, I'm appreciative of the first two picks here, but I don't think he's going to wow me on whoever he picks to replace Rickman. Bravest man that Harry's ever known. He plays the good, the bad, and everything else in between. Although he is rarely at the forefront in the plot, his interesting face... In his so whoever wrote Snape, maybe it's just Alan Rickman's acting, is the opposite of whoever wrote Dumbledore. Those are two opposite people in my head because how you get one character and nail like... Taking the adaptation of the books and cutting out whatever you need to cut out, you just get all of Snape. And Alan Rickman just brings it all. You understand the same exact things in, in a lot of it. It's not perfect, but he's the best adaptation from the books by far, other than Luna. Luna might be a really good adaptation as well. But, man. His timid nature so alludes good. to inner workings in his mind and how he's always up to something. For Snape, it's hard to look beyond the perfect choice even though he is american the face the hair his... <laughs> he's right it's gotta be adam driver it's gotta be adam driver yeah that's a good pick is it gonna be nearly as good as alan recommend no maybe though he's versatile acting skill adam driver would be the he's only good. choice in my eyes and i'll never stop loving him even though it doesn't make sense anymore. Yeah, yes, he's, he's really good. Side, but he's by far the best part of the sequel trilogy. Did he tell you what happened that night? Yes. All right, also a Star Wars nerd. By far the best part of the sequel trilogy. I didn't have... Ray was the best part of the sequel trilogy up until uh, The Rise of Skywalker. Right? Going into The Rise of Skywalker, I was so excited... For Ray, I know I'm. It's a hot take to say the Last Jedi was amazing, but for Ray to be just a nobody, just somebody who accidentally ended up here, who's just she has had to take all this on, just because she's no one, because she's an accident. Like she was just the wrong place at the wrong time and got caught up with these people, right? And now she's here and she has to be the hero, and of course she's friggin. I'm not gonna spoil it, but of course she's not that. And if, so he's right. Adam Driver was easily the best part of the the the, uh, the sequel trilogy, but I think it's only because they butchered Ray and then threw her off a cliff and then ran her over with a bulldozer, and then at the end she gets a yellow lightsaber. So that was pretty cool. Those are my hot takes, and I think he would knock it out of the park. He's an amazing actor, and he's wowed me in every single movie he's in. And I'm sure he'd be someone to take interesting choices and not do an impersonation of just Alan Rickman. Yeah, so I Adam think Driver so. Driver as Severus Snape. 
I think it works. It's not perfect, but I think it works. Sticking with There's the no better pick. We should tackle the villain of Philosopher's Stone. No, not Voldemort, because at this point in time, he's really just someone's hairdo. But Quirrell, the man who is willing to accept he who must not be named on the back of his That's head. actually not the bad makeup for this time. the entire movie with his stutter and the perception of weakness. I think Andrew Scott would bring... <gasps> Yes. Yes, yes, yes. If you have not seen Andrew Scott in Sherlock as Moriarty or in Fleabag as Hot Priest, you are missing out on some of the best television performances. He's so good. A different layer to this performance than we saw in the original. Have you seen his work on I'm Sherlock almost sad he'd only he be in the one movie. Role. Oh, here's Sherlock. No, don't be obvious. I mean, I'm going to kill oh. you anyway someday. That's what people do! I'm saving it up for something special. No, 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 no. And most importantly, I think he takes on the physicality as well. Can I quickly, sorry, we're going to we're gonna go to YouTube again quickly here. Uh, I'm going to show you the Andrew Scott, that's what people do from Sherlock. Where is that? Here it is. It is honestly one of the most, because you don't expect it and it just hits you. And then you're like, this guy's, this guy's Cut Moriarty. All those people, all those little problems, even 30 million quid just to get you to come out and play. So take this as a friendly warning, my dear. Back off. Although, I have loved this. This little game of ours, playing gym for my tea. Playing gay. Did you like the little touch with the underwear? You could have died. That's what people do! Oh. Man. So good. Well, I think Quirrell's movement and body language done so, by Scott. Oh my god, really Andrew Scott is so good. Of his performance, and I think he'd do an amazing job. And if anything, it'd be really interesting. So, Andrew Scott yeah. and Professor Quirrell. 100%. He's, he's honestly four for four. I underestimated this guy. I really did. What's his name again? Oh, it says it, Brian Seeker. I underestimated him for sure. He's doing a fantastic job. I don't know how he's going to pay for all of it. Staff. Hagrid's but. up next. The half giant, the gentle giant, funny, and always has his heart on his sleeve. This one's difficult. Although Harry Potter always had an amazing cast, I felt like Hagrid was right on the nose and perfect. I really struggled. Not as with good as one. Snape, but, but really I good. Maybe we can go a different way. Really good Almost casting. Lean into that comedic relief. Robbie Coltrane. More. That's why I went with Nick Frost. I think oh, yeah. he would exemplify that gentle side yep, very well. I agree. All while bringing some much needed. There's no way he can afford this the first entry <laughs> series of TV though. Gary thinks we should keep up with a crawl. Because they know what we're doing, but they don't know that we know what they're doing. Yeah, no, I think, Basically, I no think Nick Frost is a, a good pick. Idea. <laughs> so Nick Frost is Hagrid. Now, for moving on, we should really tackle Harry's home, the Dursleys, Vernon, Petunia, and Dudley. As I mentioned previously, any the owner Shaw was really good. So, Petunia. sorry, Dudley, you're going to be unknown as well. But Vernon and Petunia, they set the tone for the story. They have a no-nonsense tone to them. Mark Addy from Game of Thrones. Yeah, Bobby B. I don't want to be too rude, but have you ever made the eight? Have you ever made the eight, boy? A Knight's Tale. I feel so it would good. Be perfect for Vernon. And I feel like Olivia Coleman. I feel like he said that with more laughter. Petunia. Although the he's gonna cast <laughs> okay. Vernon. Hold up, let's. I feel like he's gonna cast Oscar. Is it Emmy? No, it's Oscar award. I don't know if it's an Emmy for the Crown or an Oscar for the other sh the movie she was in where she played the Queen. A different queen, but the queen. I think it was the Oscar. So he's gonna. He's, his budget is insane. I agree with Olivia Coleman, but he's thinking on another planet than I'm thinking. I don't have the money for this. I feel like Olivia Coleman would bring a lot more. Fantastic to pick, Petunia. though. Although the characters in the original. Surely Olivia are Coleman needs to well. be at These Hogwarts. Have a lot more depth that could really be explored, and I feel like Mark Addy and Coleman could really expand them and flesh out these characters. To be it's fair, a though, in a TV them. series, so they'd Addy be on the screen and Olivia more. Olivia Coleman as Petunia and Vernon Dursley. Yeah, that Photoshop of Mark Addy's pretty bad. Now there bad. are minor roles that do come back in the series, but they play importance in Philosopher's Stone, such as Ollivander, someone who I think would be amazing for Ollivander would be Bill Nye. <laughs> He's got this otherworldly nature to him, and although we barely see him, and the budget keeps climbing, and the budget so keeps Nighy climbing, and he's just throwing money around. 
Yeah, that's and a good And then there's pick, roles though. like the ghost at Hogwarts and Felch, who show up every once in a while in the films, but really don't play any crucial role. Still, they are important. I They're mean, more important the in the party, books. And Peeves is always up to something. So for Filch, I think Reeves and fans could really explore the oh! storyline and play the character differently than we've Interesting. seen. Interesting. So Reeves Ifans as Filch. Yeah. I don't know enough of his work. But as yeah. For nearly headless Nick, I think sure. it would be hard to take away the role from John Cleese. But honestly, I think Rowan Atkinson would nail this small role. He'd play it with a ridiculousness and a fun-loving nature that I feel like would again steal scenes. If you're talking about book ghosts, whether it's nearly headless Nick or just any the um, the Baron or whatever his name is, I can't remember off the top of my head. But I think Rowan Atkinson hits the ghost again. I'm worried about the budget. I'm concerned. It's nearly about the payroll. I think so. I think it's a good, it's a good pick. So Peeves the Poltergeist, a role that fans have always wanted to see on screen. Oh yeah, we didn't get really Peeves in the movies. Peeves is so Peg good. Have some fun with the character. He'd really jump off the screen. So Simon Pegg as Peeves the Poltergeist. I mean, and you get Simon Pegg and Nick Frost in the same movie. So there I like is that. the cast of Harry Potter and the Philosopher's Stone. Oh, we're definitely doing the next one. Unknown actor Amazing. That we haven't seen before. I think this is a really interesting cast. And I understand there are many characters we briefly see on screen, but play a much bigger I think role in the series. it's a very expensive I'm cast. I'm not casting them today. They're going to come back, like Molly Weasley or even Lily Potter. I'm going to wait to cast them in the film that makes sense. For example, Molly is much more prevalent in the Chamber of Secrets. Correct. So what do you think of the cast? And are you interested in the Harry Potter TV series? That what do I think of the cast? Amazing. He did a great job. It's expensive, but I, get, I did not give this guy enough credit when I was recommended these videos. I was like, oh, he's going to recast. He, you know what I mean? Like a lot of recasting videos, especially if you get those online, like kind of magazine style casting videos that are like, they're they're trying just to get ad rev off you. They're not trying to recast properly either. I think I think this guy's really thoughtful and does a good job. The the presentation is really nice. I think it's very good, very very good. In terms of what I think of a Harry Potter TV series, um, I'll take anything. I'll take more movies. I'll take a TV series. I'll take a magazine. I'll take comics. I don't care. Um, I think a TV series would flesh out the books more and flesh them out better as 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 would anything. But as a fan of Game of Thrones and Outlander, what you see with those shows and those adaptations is even though you get 10 hours and 12 hours and even Outlander season one, 16 hours, you don't still have, don't have enough time to, to do everything. So I, I think people would look at the TV series as like a saving grace for Harry Potter because they didn't get what they wanted in the, in the movies and then still hate it in the TV show because they can't separate it properly. But I, I'd like it. I'd take it. Could really dive more into the story than the movies could. Let me know in the comments below and let me know if you enjoyed this and we'll tackle chamber. I did enjoy this. Brian Seeker. Is that his name? Brian Seeker. I give it a 10 out of 10, mate. Well done. Chamber of Secrets. As always, thank you to my patrons, Adam Gray, Jeremy Jacobs, Jenny Edwards, Gabe Marchand, Gunnar Leglin, Colleen West, Marco Perry, Roland, Aiden McShane. Oh, this guy's got patrons? Kieran Hunt, Damn. George Conan, they must do Brandon this often. Warner, Sweeby, Alex Tal, Derek B. Bell, Jacob Wolf and newcomers, Jerome Froelich and Alexander Gardulo. Thanks for your support. Awesome. And I'll see you in the next video. Sweet. Thank you guys so much for watching. That was a nerd's delight recasting Harry Potter. I, I very much enjoyed that video. Like I said, Brian Seeker killed it. Absolutely great. We're definitely going to do the Chamber of Secrets uh, tomorrow. I don't know when these will be posted. I kind of just record these reaction videos when the idea pops in my head and post them as it makes sense. So... Um, but yeah, look for the next React video to be the Chamber of Secrets. I'm going to try and react to all of these tomorrow and, and work on that. But thank you guys so much for watching. I really appreciate it. If you like the video, definitely click that like button. If you like this type of content, definitely hit that subscribe button. We do a lot of things on the channel. Some of them are React videos. Some of them are nerdy things. Some of them are video games. So there's a lot going on. But hit that subscribe button if you want to see more like this. And we'll see you in the next one.